Imagine if someone took something from you without your permission and then used it without you knowing it. You didn't miss it and this thing helped millions of other people, but no one ever asked you what you thought about any of it. How would you feel? This is the story of an American woman who unknowingly had the most important human cells in history. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, where today we will discover the story of Henrietta Lacks, the woman with the most impactful cells in history, the HeLa cell line. This cell line has since been used to combat some of humanity's biggest killers like polio, cancer, and HIV. Henrietta Lacks was born Loretta Pleasant in Roanoke, Virginia on the 1st of August, 1920. At some point, she adopted the name Henrietta, or Henny for short. Henrietta married David Lax on the 10th of April, 1941. She had already given birth to her son by David, one Lawrence Lax, in 1935, when Henrietta was 14 years of age, and a daughter, Elsie Lax, in 1939. Henny had worked hard during her youth on a tobacco farm and dropped out of school at a young age to help support her siblings. As an adult, Henrietta was fondly remembered by those who knew her as a petite and well-manicured lady. Henrietta and David Lax left the tobacco farm in the same year that they were wed, moving their children to Maryland in Baltimore County so that David could work in a nearby steel factory. Three more children were born to the couple, David, Deborah, and Joseph. In January 1951, when Henrietta was 31 years old, she began to experience a knotted sensation in her uterus. So, she visited the John Hopkins Hospital, where a doctor named Howard W. Jones confirmed that Henrietta had cervical cancer. It was during her treatment for this cancer that two tissue samples of Henrietta's cervix were taken, one healthy and one cancerous, and passed on to a cancer researcher at John Hopkins named George Otto Gay. Henrietta had no knowledge that her tissue samples had been taken, and therefore, she had not given her consent. Tragically, Henrietta Lacks passed away in August 1951 at the age of 31, but her cells, named Gila for the first two letters of her first and last names, would live on and change medical history. So why were Henrietta Lacks cells so important, and what medical research have HeLa cells been used for? These amazing cells had the ability to multiply and never die. Most cells quickly die in laboratory conditions, but HeLa cells are different. They just keep on living, and after 20 to 24 hours, they start to multiply, thus making them ideal for medical research. After the HeLa line was established in 1952 by George Otto Gay, they were first put to work developing a vaccine for polio. By 1955, the vaccine for polio was ready to go, and by 1979, polio had been entirely eradicated in the United States. The polio virus had been identified in 1902, with an epidemic occurring in New York City in 1916. Studies into the virus and research into vaccines had been going on since 1910, with a surge in cases in the United States in 1952 with 57,628 cases and 21,000 of them resulting in paralysis for the sufferer. The vaccine could not have come soon enough. It was in no small part thanks to Henrietta Lacks. Moving forward in time to 1956, it was now time for the HeLa cell line to help researchers understand the effect of radiation on human cells during an X-ray. Invaluable information was gained from these experiments about how radiation can destroy DNA. Once again, the HeLa cell line was vital in determining the detrimental effect that X-rays can have on our health. In the same year, scientists used HeLa cells to find out more about diagnosing cancer. So successful was this method that oncologists still use the technique today. By the time the next decade had rolled around, the HeLa cell line would once again make history by taking part in the space race. These amazing cells were sent into outer space aboard a capsule in order to study the effects of space travel on astronauts. Later, in the 1960s, HeLa cells were being used to test the efficacy of a drug called hydroxyurea. This drug was approved as being a safe and effective treatment against sickle cell anemia and some blood cancers. The list of ways that Henrietta Lacks' cells have been used by medical science goes on and on. They've been used in the battle against HIV and Ebola virus. They've been used to understand tuberculosis. They've even been used to study the effects of aging. There is simply no denying just how important these human cells have been to the protection of human life. They've even helped in the fight against humanity's latest threat, COVID-19. HeLa cells have been used in a staggering 70,000 studies. One cannot help but wonder, what would Henrietta herself think? If she had been asked to donate her cells to medical science, would she have said yes? If she could have projected into the future and seen just how much humanity has benefited from the immortal HeLa cell line, possibly, yes. But she was not asked. She was not told a single thing about it. 
The Lax family were kept in the dark about the development of the Gila cell line too until the mid 1970s. In 2010, Henrietta Lax's family were approached by author Rebecca Sklute, who wanted to write a history of the Lax family. Sklute worked very closely with Deborah, Henrietta's daughter, when she wrote The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lax. The author used her first royalty check from the book to set up a fund for Henrietta's descendants to help them with education and healthcare. The Lax family themselves are now working to educate the wider community about Henrietta's life, her gift to the world, and the issues that still affect communities today, just like the community that Henrietta came from, such as poverty and lack of education. The Lax family are also committed to educating the next generation about issues of privacy and consent in the world of medical science. This is something that they understand only too well. Family members were shocked when biographical and medical information about Henrietta and the Lax family were published in the 1980s. In 2021, an article was published on Live Science about how Henrietta Lax's estate had sued one of the biotechnology companies that had made profits from the Gila cell line, even after its unethical beginnings came to light. The family has never received any of the profits that these biotech companies made from Henrietta's cells. When Henrietta Lax went to the John Hopkins Hospital in 1951, the powers that be decreed that the staff there were under no obligation to ask permission from her to harvest her cells. Indeed, a lawsuit in 1980 on a similar case saw the judge ruling that discarded tissue was no longer the property of the person and could thus be commercialized. Today, attitudes have changed. It is recognized that whilst Henrietta's legacy is immense, the way the medical community went about it was wrong. Henrietta Lacks was vulnerable, a black woman in 1950s America accessing healthcare in one of the few hospitals that treated black patients. She had no choice but to trust those who cared for her in her final year of life. The John Hopkins Hospital has a page dedicated to the memory and legacy of Henrietta Lacks on their official website, honoring her impact and promoting the importance of upholding high bioethical standards. They are a nonprofit hospital that clearly states, John Hopkins and other medical research centers maintain strict patient consent processes for those who donate tissue and cellular materials for research. This current position may never have been made possible had it not been for the story of Henrietta Lacks and the Gila cell line. Today, the medical science community and the Lacks family have worked together to establish rules about the collection of tissue samples from patients, starting with getting consent from them. The Lacks family want their matriarch to be remembered for the human being that she was, not just as a cell line. Henrietta Lacks was a small woman with a big heart, who painted her nails red, loved spaghetti, and danced with her children in her arms. What do you think about the story of Henrietta Lacks and the story of the Gila cell line? How would you feel if this happened to you, that your cells were taken without your consent and used for medical research that resulted in millions receiving life-saving care? How can we weigh up the good that the Gila cell line has done for humanity against the profits that biotechnology companies have made from these immortal cells? none of which ever made it into her family's hands. And how do you think Henrietta would have felt, knowing what her family knows now? Share your thoughts about this remarkable story with us in the comments section below. Perhaps it was one of Henrietta's nephews, Alfred Lax Carter, who summed up the complicated story of Gila cells best. They were taken in a bad way, but they are doing good for the world. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.